In this video, I'm gonna show you how you take a cheap plastic miniature like this and prepare it for painting. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Black Magic Craft. Last week, I started an exciting new series of videos on the basics of miniature collecting and painting. And in that episode, I talked a little bit about some of the different affordable lines that can get you started in the hobby, compared the pros and cons of each. So maybe at this point, you've already went out to your local game store and picked up a few minis and you want to get painting. Before you can start painting, there is a fair amount of work you need to do to prep your miniatures. And in this episode, I'm gonna talk about some of those steps. But first, a disclaimer. I'd like to remind some of my viewers that this series is geared towards beginners. Absolute beginners who have no idea about how to get started, are intimidated by the massive amount of information and techniques that exist. So I'm covering this topic with that in mind. I'm touching on the bare bones basics of what you need to do to get some usable minis on your table. There are a lot of techniques and different materials and things that I could talk about, but I don't want to yet. I don't want to overwhelm new people in the hobby. Last video, a lot of people screamed bloody murder that I was suggesting affordable plastic minis, that I should be directing people to high quality metal miniatures and airbrushes and expensive paints. and. All that information is true and I don't disagree with it. The higher quality stuff is nicer and it's going to yield better results and that's all fine and dandy. But these videos are for people who just wanna spend a couple bucks and test out the waters. We can build on these techniques later and get into more expensive, complicated things. So for now, the basics. Mold lines, the dreaded mold lines that have people always freaking out. When miniatures are made, they are made in a mold or a form. And generally those molds are two pieces, meaning that they are like a sandwich, it's filled up with resin or plastic or metal, and then boom, mold is open and there's your piece. The seams of the molds sometimes create little seams or lines on a miniature. The quality of the minis sometimes affect how severe these mold lines are, although sometimes really expensive metal minis have some pretty bad ones and plastic ones have none at all, so it's kind of a crapshoot. These lines can be kind of difficult to see on an unpainted mini. You may not even notice them, especially on Reaper Bones when it's all white, it is very hard to see them. But when you paint your mini, they become highly visible. So that's why you need to clean them up before you start painting. And when I say you need to clean them up, I'm lying. You don't need to clean them up. This is the part of the video where people on the internet start losing their minds and typing comments about how mold lines are the devil and your whole house will burn down if you don't just mold lines. Don't worry about it. They are something that makes a mini look kind of not as nice, but if this is the beginning for you and you're just painting a handful of goblins to throw on the table, play with your kids, no one's gonna notice mold lines from five feet away. But as you progress in the hobby and your skills improve, it's something you're gonna wanna start dealing with when a, trying to achieve a higher quality result. So I'm gonna tell you how to remove them if you want to start now. I find that the easiest way to do it is with a small X-Acto knife or a small file. It's actually a lot easier to remove the mold lines on metal minis because there's less of a risk of you gouging too deep or cleaning off too far. Bones material is very soft and it's very easy to accidentally cut a whole hand or nose off if you're not careful. So take your time, go slowly and just scrape the excess plastic away until you get a piece that's fairly smooth. On some different shapes, a knife is gonna be more appropriate and on other shapes, a file is gonna be more appropriate. You just have to play with this a little bit and get used to the process. One of the more difficult parts about cleaning mold lines is finding them all. Like I said, they can be really hidden. 
nicely planned out molds on models will put the mold lines on a seam where it actually makes sense maybe on a flare of a cape or a pant line or something but sometimes they're terrible and they go right across the face and those are can be really challenging to clean up and it takes a bit of practice but it's something that you can do take a little bit of extra effort and it's going to make your model look a fair amount better once it's painted some miniatures don't come fully assembled they often come in pieces. You need to glue those pieces together. For most materials like plastics, the best glue you're gonna find is your regular old CA, Sina, Acola, I never remember the real name, super glue, crazy glue, you know the stuff. That's going to be the basic best glue that you should have in your arsenal for gluing parts of miniatures together. You don't need expensive, branded specific miniature glue you can go to the dollar store and buy the off-brand cheap super glue and it will work just fine i do recommend having some of the gel variety in your arsenal because on certain parts that will be a lot easier to work with than the really liquid stuff the super glue is going to hold together plastic parts really strong with metal miniatures because they're so heavy you have to be a little bit more careful if you're bonding two big flat surfaces together with glue, it's going to be really strong. But if you're gluing on something like an arm or a leg and there's two points that are very small where they're glued together, but then there is a huge leverage point where something can shear off, it's likely that super glue alone is not going to hold. So before you glue it, I recommend pinning your models. This is something that for beginners might seem a little bit intimidating, but it's really not. Essentially, all you're doing is taking a small bit of wire or pin. I personally use paper clips. You cut little stems of it, drill a hole in each side of your piece, glue the pin into one side and then glue it together. And then that way you have a glue joint that is gluing the flat portion together but a pin that is stopping against sheer snapping force. You're gonna need to buy some very, very, very fine drill bits in order to drill out the holes for these pins. I personally use a rotary tool from Proxon to drill the holes. Uh, something like a Dremel tool would also work. The cheapest thing for you to get and the easiest thing to control is actually a little hand vise or pin vise, I think they're called. It's essentially just a little tiny screwdriver that holds a small drill bit and you can spin it in your hand and very carefully control the rate at the at which the drill turns. Drill your little holes, glue the pins inside and you're ready to go. Don't let this process scare you. It's really not that big of a deal. When I started, the thing about pinning minis that confused me was how do you know where to drill the hole? Because if you're just gluing two pieces together, it's easy to put them together, then line it up till it's sitting, right? If you have a hole drilled in each side and a pin and the hole's in the wrong spot, things are gonna be out of whack. So how do you deal with that? Well, one way is realizing that with pinning, you still have some play. The other trick you can use is to just take a little dab of paint, put it on one part, then push the two pieces together, then remove them, then if all goes well, you will have a dot on each side where the two pieces connected at the perfect point and you know where to drill your holes. One thing to note about gluing pieces together, sometimes you might not actually want to glue all the pieces together before you paint them. You should look at your model and assess whether or not having pieces glued together is gonna make certain spots of the model really inaccessible and difficult to paint. If a character has an arm with a shield on it that's posed in such a way that it's gonna create a little pocket where you can't get to with the brush, maybe don't glue those parts together before painting. You can absolutely paint your parts separately, then glue them together after and touch up paint if you need to. I actually even find that sometimes I'll get a miniature, especially with the WizKids ones, they're kind of bad for this, where they are pre-assembled and their poses have spots that are really hard to get to with a paintbrush. 
and I have in the past just said, screw it. And I've actually cut parts right off myself, separated them so I could paint them separately and put them back together. The one problem with gluing things afterwards is if the seams aren't nice, it can create a gap. Filling those gaps is easy before paint and it's a little bit more challenging after. If you are going to be pre-assembling or you get miniatures that are pre-assembled, you may notice that at some joints, especially at like where arms meet shoulders, necks, you might see a gap that doesn't quite look right, where you can really see the two pieces are separate pieces glued together. Again, like cleaning up mold lines, this isn't something you have to do, it's just something that if you take the time to do, it will improve the way your mini looks once complete. It may or may not be worth the extra effort for you. I do encourage you to at least try it out and see if the reward for the effort is worth it. As you progress with mini painting, you're gonna end up wanting to do it because not doing it is gonna limit your overall finish quality. How do you fill these gaps? There is a couple different ways and I have two favorites. The main way that I fill my gaps is using a product called Green Stuff. Yes, Green Stuff. Yeah, sound familiar? Greenstuffworld.com. Their whole website and business was designed around making stuff to work with this product called Green Stuff. All it is is a two-part putty that when mixed together hardens and becomes very, very strong. You have time to work with it. It's just a two-part putty and it's really quite amazing. You take a small piece of this green stuff, mix it together until the blue and yellow parts become green. And to fill a seam, I just take a little tiny piece of it and I roll it out into a small strand and I will wrap that strand around the seam and using some sort of shaping tool, I will push it into the seam with a little bit of water, you can sculpt and blend it. You can smooth it out. You can add any texture lines to continue a pattern that is on the mini that you might need, and you can make the seam invisible. Once this stuff cures, you can paint it. It's going to be super duper strong, and you never really have to worry about that piece breaking off. Green stuff is a little tricky to find in person, at least it was for me. I can find it in my local game stores, but it's a little bit overpriced. It's better when you can buy it wholesale, not repackaged by another company, but buy it directly from the creator, Needite, I think is the brand name. I'll put a link in the description of the video and in my essential equipment store on blackmagiccraft.ca so you can pick some up on Amazon. It's gonna be a better price than buying the rebranded stuff at the hobby store. But if you don't wanna spend the money on green stuff or you can't find it, there is another alternative that almost everyone should be able to do. It's an old, old trick. It has been used in model making for years. It's used in guitar repair. It's used in fishing lure repair. It's used in all sorts of stuff. It's a classic technique of super glue and baking soda. If you put baking soda into super glue, it will create an incredibly strong plastic-like substance that can then be sanded and scraped. It's amazing. This is how I filled the seams on some of my first miniatures before I got my hands on green stuff. And it's really an incredible trick. All you gotta do is grab your super glue, go to your fridge. I know you got a box of baking soda in the fridge, steal it out of there and take a little bit to do this. All you need to do is fill the seam with a little bit of super glue and then carefully sprinkle a little bit of baking soda over top and boom, it will instantly solidify and turn hard. You can also fill the seam with baking soda, wipe off the excess and then drip super glue on top. Both work. They each offer a different level of control, so you might need to practice a little bit with each to see which is easier. But it works really, really well. If you have a you know bumpy texture or some of it's too big, you can sand and file this concoction down and get it looking nice and smooth. And it's really a really great trick. So at this point, you should have a miniature that has the mold lines cleaned up. The parts you want pre-assembled are glued and pinned together and any ugly gaps have been filled and sanded. Almost ready to move on to painting. But we're gonna continue this in the next episode 
where I am going to show you a few different tips and tricks of basing your minis to put them on nice scenic bases before paint. I'm gonna show you my favorite ways of doing it. That'll be the next episode. And then after that, we can finally get to some painting. But like every type of painting, whether it be miniature painting or house painting, the results are very dependent on the prep work. The prep work is key, which is why we're spending a few videos discussing it. I hope that you found this video useful. If you did, hit that like button and drop me a comment below. I'm gonna continue this series. I'm really excited about it. I got so much good feedback from everyone from the first episode that I know that I'm onto something good here. If you're new to the channel, just discovered it, I suggest you hit subscribe and check out my back catalog of videos because I got tons of them. If you wanna build some cool terrain, I got you covered. This little miniature thing is an offshoot of the real part of the channel, which is terrain building. If you wanna pick up any of the tools and supplies that I use regularly to build terrain and prepare and paint minis, head over to blackmagiccraft.ca. There you will find my essential equipment store where I link to all of my favorite stuff, my tried and trusted things. Click on those links, buy them through Amazon. You get the right thing, you get the good thing, and you help out the channel along the way because I get a small commission on those sales and that helps fund these videos. The other way these videos are paid for and funded is through the generous support of people on Patreon. If you'd like to help out the channel and help me continue to grow it and improve it, the best way you can do that is by supporting me on Patreon. Those funds are crucial for this channel to succeed and continue. So head on over to my Patreon page, check it out, see what it's all about and see how you can help me and I can help you. And that about wraps it up for this week. I got a game to run tonight, so I gotta get to work on that. I will see you guys again next week. Cheers and happy crafting. <laughs>